Hello, it's a very lovely, lovely morning from here in Delhi and hope as always that each one of you are absolutely, absolutely fine and we always pray to the Almighty to shower a supreme amount of success upon each one of you. So on such note, we start this particular session which happens to be the intro session and if it happens to be the intro session regarding CMA Inter Paper 5 Financial Accounting, of course I'm talking about new course. So, in this particular session, we are going to have a little bit of chat with you with respect to the contents which we which you will have to go through. And we are going to share with you a little bit of what we call some experience and strategical inputs which will help you in your pathway to success in the very first attempt. So here we go. So as far as your this particular paper is concerned, financial accounting, it's pretty long what we call paper, no doubt, and lots of topic you need to do in it. So this particular <coughs> entire paper is divided into five into different segments. For example, section A here the accounting basics, then section B preparation of financial statements, then similarly section C and section D. Correct. So these are the four sections. So as far as section A is concerned, it is allotted 25 percent marks, and under this particular uh, unit, what we are supposed to actually study. Here we are supposed to study and fundamentals of accounting and basically these are the theoretical aspects, meaning, scope and significance of accounting, accounting principles, concepts and conventions and besides that you need to have a bit of knowledge regarding capital and revenue transactions and of course depreciation and rectification of uh, errors. But I have seen actually through my experience that students tend to neglect actually these topics, don't do that. Lots of questions in the examinations actually get tossed up from this particular part itself. Then there are, <clears throat> then in this unit, there are chapters which are, which come into the category of special transactions because special sort of accounting principles are there. With respect to bills of exchange, you have to study and then consignment and then joint venture insurance claim. Under bills of exchange, you have a bit of idea already about that because in your class 11th, you have done a wee bit regarding bills of exchange but at this particular level we are going to talk a lot about accommodation of bills which you did not study earlier. The similarly consignment as you have heard about it that consignment means sending of goods by the person who happens to be the owner of the goods to his agent to be sold by on his behalf generally in a in an area other than the one where the owner is residing. For example if owner is residing in city A he has appointed an agent in city B and is asking the agent that we are going to send you the goods and you sell these goods on my behalf and for the same I will give you some commission. So how the accounting pattern will unfold, correct, well, that we are going to take up under this particular chapter. Similarly, joint ventures are basically short partnership to cover some special projects, correct, and uh, how accounting pattern would unfold quite obviously that becomes the core issue when we are going to pick up this particular chapter. Then under the insurance claims you will learn that most of the time business houses gets their stock, especially stocks because stock plays a very vital role, correct, in the production process, gets their stock insured and if there is loss of stock then how the insurance claim is demanded, how the calculation of the insurance claim is done, that is the issue. Besides that, sometimes uh, business houses take loss of profit policy also, in that case the business houses will definitely incur some losses due to incur loss of profits due to some what we call you can say eventualities and but since they have taken insurance policies since they have insured those losses so how the claims will be computed that becomes the theme idea of this particular chapter then section b deals with preparation of the financial statement it comprises of 40 marks 40 marks pretty heavy unit so under it lots of chapter and all these chapter are of great length and under it you have to study preparation of the financial statement of profit oriented organization you have done the final accounts in your class 11th or 12th whatever it is that means you have done it so many times in your past phases of education and you know how to prepare trading and profit and loss account and balance sheet but from this particular chapter at this level generally the small questions would be tossed up in the examination especially related to calculation of bad debts or preparation of bad debts account provision for doubtful debts account etc then similarly under this unit you will learn the preparation of financial statement 
of non-profit organization even non-profit organization prepare a sit and payment account and balance sheet that is nothing but their final accounts correct and again you have done it in your class 11th or 12th so basics you are already in the know of but at this level we'll pick up some higher issues when we are going to pick up this particular chapter and then there is preparation of the final accounts of a single trader that is from incomplete records it is also known as single entry accounting system you have seen that even under single entry accounting system sometime data is given to us and we have to prepare the final accounts that is profit or loss account and balance sheet then you have a very heavy unit partnership now partnership full fledged partnership you have to go to admission retirement and death even though you have done it in your class 12 so many times and even in your earlier phases of education but in spite of that the issues which you did not touch upon in your earlier phases of education you need to touch upon that for example under admission you need to know regarding memorandum revaluation a lot similarly under retirement questions on rectification and similarly questions on debt will encompass combined question of uh, retirement and death or combined question of admission and retirement similarly dissolution of partnership of firms it's quite a simple chapter and most of the time we have seen in the examination we do get simple questions like questions on insolvency then amalgamation of partnership form when two firms amalgamate combine together how the accounting is done that is the core issue of this particular chapter the conversion of partnership firm into a company often a partnership firm gets itself converted into a company form of business in that case how the accounting is done and similarly when a partnership business would sell its business to a company how the accounting is done these are the things which we have to cover and we have covered it over what we call at great length needless to add then section c comprises of 20 percent and under that you will have to go through chapters like cell balancing ledger this chapter always gives great amount of hiccups and problems to the student but i'm sure once you will do this particular chapter you'll feel at ease with it then similarly there are royalties higher purchase and installment systems and you are lucky in the sense that now higher purchase uh, transactions this particular chapter earlier was quite long but now it has been shortened correct so till up to reposition only you need to do and similarly branch and departmental branch account is very heavy chapter and we have covered nearly 100 questions in it and departmental accounts again we have covered nearly 35 questions in it so these are two very very important chapter and then you have a unit of 15 percent wherein you are going to learn regarding the overview of computerized accounting generally you get a question theoretical question advantages of computerized accounting or software etc then accounting standard at your level you need to go through accounting standard one of course which is related to uh, disclosure of accounting policy is to inventory valuation seven contracts then nine which deals with recognition of revenue and then as 10 remember one thing as 10 actually as 6 is no more now and instead now it is as 10 because as 6 has submerged into accounting standard as 10 so accounting is named accounting standard as 10 which deals with property plant and equipment and earlier it used to deal with fixed asset but now it is fixed asset as per companies like 2013 are known as property plant and equipment so this is standard will encompass not only the uh, guidelines with respect to accounting for what we call property plant and equipment but also with respect to depreciation so these are the standard which you will have to study so this is the course content and you have already seen there are so many chapters endless in list of chapters so pretty vast chapter and we have given widest possible coverage and needless to add besides that we have covered each and every question of the module indirectly it also means you need not require to go through your module at all and moreover sometime we have seen that some printing mistakes are there so that is the reason and my advice is simply do the material and the tutorial which we are providing and that is more than enough as we have covered as you will see by yourself once you will go through the chapter that we have covered each and every bit of module every past question paper every mock test paper rtp etc so we have uh, we have left nothing to chance so that is the point when i say we have the widest possible coverage that is the reason for saying so then besides the next point which i would like to share with you is that often students are asking sir give us some input regarding the examination because examination pattern is concerned as far as earlier offline examination used to take place and in the offline examination earlier 
when examination work used to be held in an offline manner, I'm not talking about online, in an offline manner, over there you used to get total nine questions, total eight questions, and out of eight question, question number one used to be of compulsory nature, wherein you used to get objective sort of questions in the form of MCQs, fill in the blanks, true, false question, or mass the following, and this question used to command 25, 25 marks, correct? And besides that, there were seven more questions, used to be seven more questions, and out of those seven, you used, you needed to attempt only five questions. So five more questions, and each question used to command 15 marks. So five into 15, 75, 75 plus 25 becomes 100. So this was the examination pattern when examination used to be held in an offline manner. But now, the examination nowadays are held in, as I told you, in an online manner and as per the latest inputs which we have from the institute is that as far as your upcoming examinations are concerned that will be held in an online manner but it will be center based online manner center based online manner means you will have to reach the center and over there you will have to attempt the paper in an online mode because the paper will be in in an online mode so now the pattern is like that, as per the guidelines given to us by the institute, I am saying so on behalf of that, 60% question will be of objective manner and 40% will be of descriptive or subjective manner. The moment a student go through this information, a student start feel, feeling the jitters. The reason being is that they think that if there will be 40% objective, should there be change in our methodology or something like that? No, not at all. Remember one thing, whether the question is of descriptive nature or of objective nature, you will never ever be able to do that unless and until you are well equipped with all the conceptuality of the chapter and you have done in-depth study and you have done lots of what we call descriptive question. Unless and until you have done lots of descriptive question, you cannot think of attempting the online objective question. Never go for a teaching like that where only objective things are discussed. That will never hold you in a good state. The more in-depthful study you are going to do with lots of descriptive question, then only you will be in a position to attempt the op what we call objective question. Moreover, in every chapter you will see that we have added a separate section on objective question. So once you have finished that particular chapter, you need to attempt those objective questions which have been given in a solved manner. So this is so uh, this particular point should not bother you. And then, as far as resources are concerned, you simply go through our module, not the institute's module. As I just told you a moment ago, that we have covered every bit of module. And moreover, there are some printing mistakes and sometimes there are some updations which are not incorporated in the module. So that is the reason I'm asking you to simply bank upon the tutorial and the material which we are providing. Once you, are, once you have completed our tutorials and module, then your duty is now to do at least two mock tests two revision test papers, RTPs, and two past year papers. If you have done that, then you need not require to worry. You can have a, a surety from my side that you are going to come out with supreme amount of what we call colors. Then often, as I told you earlier, that a student asked, yes, sir, is it compulsory to do the institute module? I have already given you the answer. You need not require to do that because we have covered every bit of module questions. So it will be unnecessarily doubling of efforts. Sir, in case of doubt, what we are going to do? you are first of all i take pride in the fact that i happen to be one of the largest selling faculty in india and uh, even though having a large amount of student i hardly ever face a single query but in spite of that if you come across any you can simply whatsapp but when you are whatsapp simply put up your name your phone number your query why phone number because in case we feel that we need to give the explanation by way of a call then we definitely would call upon you otherwise we can simply give the solution and the mess the solution through the message itself so in case if we feel to chat we need your number and last but not the least sir, from where to buy your latest updated and revised courses this is a very good question because latest updated and revised courses are now available I'm repeating, now available only with www.cdclasses.com. So this is the site where you need to reach for my latest updated revised courses, English version courses. So you can get it from CD classes, which I have written here also. Correct, Chandra Dureja classes. Chandra Dureja himself happens to be a prominent faculty for your costing and for your SFM paper for final level. So 
these are the things which I just wanted to share with you in this particular session. I hope that you must have driven out of it some sort of what we call benefit and some sort of advantage and some sort of what we call guidance which will help you in of for formatting your own strategy towards this particular subject. So on such note and with lots of wishes, I finish up this particular session with the promise that when we are going to meet next time, we are obviously going to take up a particular chapter and then we will discuss about the core issues of that.